Okay, so today we're going to continue the scene on the action of the scene of cash flow. I've already given you the worksheet uh, that was uh, that you're supposed to complete in the previous lesson. Can we take out the worksheet and then let's go and have a very quick discussion? Okay, can you take out the worksheet on the revolution in Cuba and Timothy 2? And then we'll have a very quick discussion on what you mean by what you see over there. Okay, there are three questions here. Very quick questions. Have you all read up on the revolution in Cuba? So understand the context. We understand the context. Okay, so in, to keep the long story short, okay, what happened was that Castro overthrew okay, Batista, who has actually been getting the support from the Americans. So now the key thing is, after Batista has been forced to, uh, to flee Cuba, Castro was the one who has actually set up the regime in Cuba. And that was actually a very left-wing regime, which is called the in this case, it's actually the communist regime. Okay, so what we're going to do now is actually to look at some of the questions. First question, what do you mean by nationalizing foreign property? What do you understand by nationalizing foreign property? The state taking ownership. Making, making okay, the companies or what we call the corporation okay, national. Meaning it belongs to the Belongs to who? Okay, belongs to the government now. Okay, belongs to the government. In short, it belongs to the government who act for the people. Now, the next thing that I want to bring to your attention is why do you think Castro wanted to nationalize American businesses in Cuba? What do you think is happening here? Why do you think it's nationalizing all these things in Cuba? Because they refuse to align. They refuse to ally. Do you think it's because Cuba refused to ally with America? America do you think that's the reason? Why do you think Castro wanted to nationalize American businesses? Why? For their own benefit. For their own benefit, okay? What do you mean by for their own benefit? What do you mean by for their own benefit? Mm -hmm. Can anybody elaborate on this? What do you mean by for their own benefit? For economic growth, okay? For their own benefit, for economic growth. Okay. Any other thing? Why do you think they want to nationalize? Why is there any particular reason why they want to uh, nationalize American businesses? Anybody? Why do you think they want to nationalize American businesses? Okay, to maybe to punish America, maybe they don't like the American. To be to be a possibility, if they don't like the American. Okay, I'm going to pose a question based on this, uh, based on what Delina has mentioned about don't like the American. Let's say, let's say the British have established some businesses in Cuba. Would Cuba do the same thing? Why? British allied with. America good. What happened if at that point of time Singapore was already a very well established country? Well, very well established country. And we also have businesses in Cuba. Do you think Castro will do the same to us? How many of you think that Castro will do the same to us? Please tell me. How many of you think Castro will not do anything to us? So all of you feel that Castro will do something to us? Why? Why? Huh? Okay, so they for their own benefit. Uh. You think it's for their own benefit. Okay? So, let me give you another scenario. What happened in, let's say, Thailand? If they actually have the ability to have all these economic resources and they invest in Cuba, will the same thing happen to them? Why? Why do you think the same thing will also happen to the other countries like Thailand or Singapore? Huh? Because it's not related to Cuba. Okay, it's not related to Cuba. Now I want you to think more deeply into the concept of communism. What is communism? So when Castro is doing all these things, what are they actually doing? They are fulfilling what a communist 
gym okay are supposed to do communist regime are supposed to do that you understand the logic or not? it has nothing to do with the american whether is it the american the dutch the british or any other country who are so better it doesn't matter because at the end of it these are what communist regime do you understand we call that is their belief that is their philosophy of having what we call equality fairness these are the things that they were looking out for equality and fairness so it doesn't matter okay but now the question is when the american businesses were being closed out how did the americans see this whole thing how do the americans see this do you think the americans saw it as ah yeah that's how communist regime do do you think they will see it that way what how will they see it they are they are threatened they are unhappy they see it as the cubans are doing something in the america can you see the context now why because this event just happened and immediately castro started to take away all these american businesses for the benefit of their own country for their own economic growth like what you mentioned but the american did not see it this way they only saw this thing Can you see that? Huh? So, if they don't like the American, likewise the American would even like Castro. Can you see the situation so far? So that was the whole entire context of it, which brings us to the next one. Okay, if you're an American business owner and Castro had nationalized a company asset in Cuba, who would you look for for help? Who would you look for for help? Quite obvious, right? The only person who will look for help is our Kennedy and our U.S. government, please go do something. I own the company in U.S. and now I have nothing. Can you see the context here? So it puts the American on direct collision with Fidel Castro. See it so far. Understand what is going on. Good. Now let's move on to the next slide. Okay, can we move on to the next slide now? Can you turn over to the second page? Okay, that is when the political cartoon came. You have this on your Okay, worksheet itself. Okay, can we go through this very very quickly? Now, what is the title of this whole entire political cartoon? Where was this cartoon being? Who is the author of this cartoon? Who is the author of this cartoon? Who is the author of this cartoon? He is a. What nationality do you think he is from? American. American. So, whose side was he expected to be on? American side. This pub, this was public in 1960. When did it happen? Any event happening in between? Them? Did it before happen before the Cuban Missile Crisis? Before the Cuban Missile Crisis, right? After what? After the revolution. So Castro is now in power, and now the Cuban Missile Crisis has not happened. So what will be the general sentiment of the American businessman now that Castro has really done all the nationalization? What is the general sentiment now? Happy? No, don't like the Americans, right? Don't like the, uh, the Cubans because of the way that they are doing things. So, this is your contact. Can you tell me, based on this picture, what is the author trying to tell you? What is he trying to tell you? What can you infer from this cartoon? What can you see from this cartoon? Anybody? Okay, we already have the first one, huh? This fella is obviously anti Castro because he is pro-America and it's after the revolution. <coughs> Can you tell me what do you see in this cartoon? Pick up aspect of the cartoon that you You saw bones, right? What were they using to cook this pot of soup or whatever that they are talking about? They're using the American bones to pick up to feed who? To feed Castro and of course the other one smiling there at the right at the corner could be one of his soldiers, his benchmen. So what is he trying to say from this? from this part of the picture up to that one. What is he trying to hit? What is the cartoonist trying to hit? Cash to is doing what? He is taking all this thing to benefit himself and his government. Can you see that? So what is the implication of it? What can you infer that about Castro government? 
if you watch to read this cartoon, you see this, what is happening? What is your impression of Castro government? Corrupted, good. Corrupted, no good. Correct? Bad government, no good. So very clearly, he is anti-Castro. Anti-Castro government, anti-Cuban government. So can you see from this picture? They are laughing and they are so fat. Now what is happening to the people? They are not fat. They are not fat. So what is it, what is it also telling you about the Castro government? Okay, what is the inference you can have? They are corrupted, uh, they are corrupted, they only care for their own benefit. Good. So the whole entire thing seems to be placing the blame on the Castro government, saying that the Castro government was corrupted. So you could very, you could see very clearly this fella is definitely anti-Castro. Now, can we look at this other part of this picture? Who is this man here? Look carefully at the picture. What is written on the chest? That means that who, is, who does he represent? He talk about ownership by Cuba. Now let's look at the title of this whole entire political cartoon. What is he mentioned? What happened when they run out of foreigners? So who are they targeting at now? Who are they trying to say? When they say what happened when, what do you think is the answer for them? What happened when they run out of foreigners? What will they do? They will chop up the Cuban and then they will use them for soup. Can you see what is happening here? They will chop up the Cuban, they will use them for soup. So, who is the American cartoonist trying to appeal to also? Trying to tell the Cuban businessman what is happening. You are next. You are next. Don't be happy. Oh, American, yeah, you, they took away your businesses. You are no longer competitors. But I can assure you, after they finish that pot of soup, these greedy people are still going to want some more. And then the next group of people they are going to want is you. So, based on this context, what are they trying to do? What are they trying to do? Why did they publish this cartoon on the newspaper? Why? To convince the people, okay, about about this fellow, right? That he is a uh, he is corrupted, he is greedy, and he is actually trying to get the people to do what? Go against him. To go against him. Very good. To go against him. To fight against him. Okay, and not to rest on this. So what you see over here is how he actually sees the cash flow. How he actually sees the American businesses to fatten themselves. Okay, so you can see the fat cash flow government versus the skinny malnourished Cuban. On the other hand, he's also trying to tell the American people, look what happened. At the end of it, the Cuban, please, once we have finished out the foreigners, you are next. Don't be too happy. Don't think that your government is very nice. And finally, the last part that they were talking about is that they will target the local company. And what he's trying to do was actually to discredit the Castro government. Okay? Sorry, I'm trying to discredit the Castro government. Okay, so this is very clear. Whose perspective is he trying to put again? Who is, whose perspective is he trying to show? Whose perspective? American perspective. Very good. He's trying to put a false American perspective. And because of this whole American perspective, he is trying to be pro American. Now the next question is, is this source reliable? No. no. Yes. Is this source reliable? No. no. Why not? Because science. Science and the way that they depicted. How do you caricature uh, Castro? Is Castro that bad? No. No, right. So when he exaggerate things like in the cartoon, when he do that, he is trying to show to the people they don't like him. If I draw horns on this person, that means I don't like him. So I caricaturize him. He is caricaturizing Castro government as though they are cannibal. They are eating up people. So the way that he has depicted them is already an exaggerated version, therefore not reliable. Okay? So then, okay. Now, any questions so far? Are we clear on this? Okay, now we are going to look at activity number three. Okay, we are going to look at activity number three, and that is called the Bay of Kings. Okay, actually, Bay of Kings. Why do we call it Bay of Kings? I'll let you find it out yourself. Okay, now the Bay of Kings, okay, context is over here. It is a very lengthy read. Okay, it's a very, very lengthy read. What I want you to do, very simple, read this article. 
and answer the question on the second page. There's only one very simple question. Okay? I'm going to give you about seven minutes to read it. Pick up the keywords, go straight to the question first. Okay, look at the question on the second page, and then I want you to spend about seven minutes to do so. Time on the clock is 12.50. Okay, we'll start our discussion at 12.57. Are we clear about what you're supposed to do? Okay, so everybody pick up your worksheet, underline if you need to, okay, this information on the Bay of Hicks, which I think is very useful.
40 seconds left. Businesses 
Okay, American businesses were affected. Okay. Is it first fairly legitimate that if my company, my country company had been taken away by force based on no fair ruling, do you think it's perfectly okay for my country to go in and help my own people? Sounds logical, right? If let's say Singapore, we have a big company in another country, suddenly this big other country decided that, oh, from today onwards, this company don't belong to you anymore. It belongs to their own country. Or, example, Apple is a company in USA, right? They come here, they set up a branch, there's an Apple company here. Then Singapore decided to do the horrible thing. I take away Apple and say, oh, sorry, now Apple in Singapore belongs to the Singapore company. Not fair, right? So that's why it's not legitimate. Understand? Because it's not legitimate, American have all the right to do so. Okay, American have all the right to do so. Now, what other thing also prompted the Americans that say we need to do something about this? What were they worried about? Uh, okay, you're worried about the spreading of communism. Very good. Communism, the whole idea about the remember the domino effect? Okay, they have the domino effect. Now, based on all these reasons that you see here, okay, based on all these reasons that you see here, the American sees this as, yes, it's perfectly okay for us to go in and do something about it. However, there is also the other side of the coin. Why is it that Castro feels that this is wrong? Why did the American don't have the right to do so? Why? How can we argue? If let's say you're a cash flow now and you're a cash flow lawyer and you need to argue for him, how are you going to argue and say that Americans have no right to do that? First of all, it's on their country. Good point. Is it your business? No right. Can you imagine we go over and tell Malaysia, oh, this is how you should run your country? Is that right? So what is this idea? That means that we are actually infringing on what? What's that word? Rights. Huh? Rights. Rights. Okay, good. The right to rule and the right to, to rule is called what? Start with S. So, sovereignty. Okay, the right to rule means you are actually infringing on their sovereignty. Can you imagine if every if America comes in and wants to mingle with our business, meddle with our business? Oh, you shouldn't run your country this way. You should run it this way. That's also the wrong thing. So, because of that, if you switch on sovereignty, what other things does it infringe on? What is the American key belief as a democratic country? People must have the right. Have the right, must have freedom right. So, when you are doing that, are you giving freedom? If let's say it's really true, not the Nadesh example, uh. what if it's really true? The people in Cuba really wanted cash flow. They don't want Pakistan. By doing this, are you being fair to them? You understand my context? So cash flow can argue it this way. No, it's unfair to us because the people really wanted me, cash flow, to be in power. You understand the context? So Americans have actually overstepped. Okay, they have stepped over the line. Okay, they have stepped over the line. Okay, are we clear on this so far? Now, the fun thing is not over. In the Bay of Pigs incident, the American did the invasion. They failed. The Russians were very upset because their friends were being threatened. Castro was being threatened. And therefore, the two of them started to send a very strong worded letter to each other. Okay, they actually sent, you know, like, like, you know, like pen pal like that, they wrote a letter to convey their unhappiness to one another. Okay, what is this letter all about? Okay, we're going to look at this thing called the ICUC. Why do you call it ICUC? Because we're talking about different perspectives. Now we're moving on to activity number okay, four. Activity number four. Okay. I want you to understand the US invasion context. And what I need you to do now is very, very simple. This article here that you see, 
this article here that you see consists of two letters, both written on the same day to one another. Okay? It is a letter, one to, from Khrushchev to Kennedy. It happens on April the 18th after okay, the Cuban Bay of Pig incident. And the other one was from Kennedy to Khrushchev about how they feel about this incident. Now, what I need you to do very simple. I want you to read through this article, these two letters from one another. And I want you to pick out and infer what was what, what was the thing that both parties wanted to do. Okay, the table is found on the back. Okay, I want you to write down what was their perspective about Castro and the communist regime in Cuba, what was Kennedy or the American perspective, what was Khrushchev perspective, and then the next one is, what is the objective? What do they want to do with Cuba? Okay, what do they want to achieve in Cuba? Okay, and all these things can be found in the letters that you see over there. Okay, are we clear about what you're supposed to do? This is how we do source-based case study. Okay, example of another source-based case study. Are we clear about what you're supposed to do? Okay, can I give you about 8 minutes to do so? Okay, by about 12, 45. We will discuss one of the letters. We will look at either the American or the Russian perspective before I go through with you to borrow the other perspective. So that you have an idea of what you're not sure what you're Are we clear about what you need to do? Okay, I know there's a lot of information overload, but these are some of the things that you need to pay attention to, especially about their viewpoint on what they want to do with Cuba because it will impact the decision that they were going to make about the Cuban Missile Crisis in the later part of the uh, incident. Okay, so about 12.45, okay, we will discuss very quickly one of the new points.
still in the middle of doing that. Do like not finish. You're not finish. All finish. Or you're just waiting for me to answer. All of you need me to sit beside you doing your history and animation. Okay? You want to hit on me or anything. Okay? Then I have to clone these two of me. So that I can sit. What you want? For you two lah. I still need to clone my one extra in case. In case one of my clone falls in. <laughs> okay, let's start off with the Bay of Pigs first. Okay, why is it called Bay of Pigs? This is where the Bay of Pigs is. Okay, this one you should remember, you should know lah. This name does it sound very familiar to you? Okay, we talk about the Cuba cigarette, uh, cigars, everything they are all found around this. This is where they actually meet all of these. Now, the uh, Guantanamo Bay is where they actually, the British, uh, sorry, the Americans used to have their military. So this is actually a place where, okay, if you look at this, this is actually the this is actually Cuba. Now why is it called the Bay of Pigs? Is it because there's a lot of these animals running around in that area? Okay, actually it was not. Okay. What happened was that when the Americans went over there, when the Americans went over there in their military bases and they were a lot of Americans coming here, they were at this bay. You all know where the bay, right? It's actually an open area that goes into this. There was a lot of things called like seagulls, birds. We was actually feasting in that area. That means there are a lot of birds coming in. And of course, the Americans didn't know what those birds are. So they asked the local, what are all those birds? But the Cubans actually replied that in their own native language. And the Americans misheard. And they thought that the animal is called pig. It's not a bird, lah. it's a bird, but it's a pig. So they find the name very amusing and the area was later called the Bay of Pigs. Bay of all the So it had nothing to do with the with the with animal or pork or whatever. They didn't have shabu shabu or anything over there. Okay, so there wasn't all this, but that was called the Bay of Pigs. Now, the Americans started this attack to overthrow the government in April 1961. What they were expected, according to John F. Kennedy, he kept denying that he knew about it. In fact, he could be true. We don't know. Because he was, before he actually wrote down everything, he was actually killed. Right? Okay, he wrote a memoir, but during his memoir, he says that he didn't know anything. It was the CIA who backed 1,400 Cuban exiles to go against Castro. That means these people were formerly supporter of Batista government. They want to overthrow them. They failed. They failed. Okay? Now, as a result of this, okay, as a result of this, Khrushchev sent a very interesting letter. A letter that shows his unhappiness towards the Amer uh, American as administration. And this was the letter in April 18, 1961. What I want you to infer is only this two thing. Can you tell me what was Khrushchev's view about the Bay of Pigs invasion? What was his perception? What was his perception? What was his perception based on this thing? What was his perception? Okay, he thinks he blamed who? How do you know he blamed the American? What evidence shows that he was blaming the American? He says that the plane bombing the city belonged to USA. The bomb they were dropping was supplied by the American government. Your statement a day says that you will not participate in give the impression that you are taking into account world. Okay, so again, what is he trying to hint about the American? <coughs> they broke their promise. Not just that, like not like here, you very bad at broke your promise. He's saying that they are. What is that word that they are? They will say. He is saying that the US equals to. People who want world peace. Remember? Oh, I'm fighting for, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all this thing, I don't want to interfere. But the American, why was the American does? Do they have the right to do that? No right. Self determination, freedom, democracy, all these things are nonsense to them. They changed the ruling. That was what Khrushchev was trying to say. And he's actually using all these statements to blame the American for what they have done. So you see that? He's blaming the American. He's saying that, look, you have allowed this 
covert campaign to take place in its long form. Not the MF, not anybody fought. The exile are not so strong. It's because of Russia. Okay, what other thing? What was the Russian stand on Cuba? What do they want to do? They want to support Cuba. How do they plan to support Cuba? Is it just verbal down there? Jia you, jia you, no right. Not jia you, jia you, right. Or Gambade, Gambade, no right. What are they trying to do? What do they want to do? What did he mention? Very, very strong word. It's not just about go, 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 Cuba, go, Castro, no, no. What did they say? We will render them help and we will repel. Repel means what? We are going to back. So, obviously, Castro, Hart, with Khrushchev and Wolf, they are now buddy, blood brothers. This is what the Soviet are doing. They are going to render them. So that means that if America were to threaten Cuba, what will happen? War will happen. Can you see the context now? It's different now, no? It's not just a civil war and what happened in Korea. It is now an open statement that if you come in and do something about it, I am coming in to help. <coughs> Simple as that. <coughs> so it is even more serious than Korean War. Because Korean War, both sides will just stay out of the, if you remember the sort of thing question that you have done. Stalin was not very keen on going in to get himself involved. They were worried. So they were trying to keep a distance. But this one is very different. No, Khrushchev is saying, if you are gay, I'm gay. If you want to make Cuba our playground, let's go in. If you go in, I will go in. That is the type of stand he is doing there. That is the stand he is saying. And that's very, very different from Stalin. Stalin was telling him, please, okay, don't be too rash. Don't do all those things. I know you want to unite Korea, but don't be rash. I'm not going to help you if you're going to be rash. Understand? At the end of it, did the Russian came in? During the Korean War, think about it. Did the, did the Russian came in? Yes or no? Who came in instead? China. Why did China came in? Was it because the Russia told them to go in and help? No. no. Because China war? Can you see that? China was threatened and that's why China stepped up. Can you see the difference or not? The whole Cold War had what? What had Cold War become? It had escalated. Can you see the context really? It's different. It's no longer you keep to your own thing, I keep to my own thing. We try not to disturb each other. Now he said, if you come in, you are hypocrites. Americans are hypocrites. If you continue like that, we are going in hell. You come into Cuba, we are repelling you. Simple as that. We are going to protect our little friend. Can you see the context here? Now, look at the second part on Khrushchev, uh, the reply that Khrushchev received from Kennedy. Okay, Kennedy wrote another letter to tell them how, what he perceived as the incident. Okay, and what is the American step. I want you to think through that. Tomorrow, we will discuss this. Okay, before I end on today's lesson, any questions? Are you clear about what you have been doing so far? Okay, I need to set the context because I need you to understand how the whole thing has escalated. Can you see the difference? It's not like Korean War anymore though. No? Korean War is, you take half, I take half. This one is, you come and take. I'm not going to give you half of Cuba though. No? Sorry, there's no half. It's either we take it or we leave it. Understand? Any question? Anybody, anything burning question you ask? All clear? Huh? So complete this. Tomorrow we'll continue with the next scene. We're going to go on to the actual fight. Okay, that will be fun. The next lesson. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you for